ever wondered where the formula comes from for the area of a circle? Well, today we're going to figure it out. Here's the materials that you're going to need for this experiment. You are going to need two equally sized circles. You will also need a pair of scissors. And the third thing is something to glue or tape it down with. So I'm going to use tape in this case because glue doesn't work very well to my board. The first thing we need to do is fold our circles. We're actually going to end up folding them the exact same way. I'll show you how to do it with one and then you can just duplicate it with the other. Start by taking your circle and folding it in half. Crease it. Okay, now I'd like you to do it again. Go ahead and do it again. And now do it one more time. You should have this really cute little ice cream cone looking shape. Now you can unfold it. And now your circle should be separated into 16 equivalent pieces. I want you to take a marker and number those next. You can see that I've numbered all of my pieces. We're going to end up actually cutting these apart, but before we do that, let's go ahead and duplicate it on the other circle. Just like your last circle, you should again have 16 equal pieces, and I want you to number those ones as well. Next, you're going to need your scissors, and I want you to cut very carefully all of these apart. You're going to end up with these little tiny pieces. They're all numbered, and we're going to make a puzzle with them. Once you've got your pieces cut apart, you can start puzzling them together. See if you can make a rectangle with them. Okay, now that you've gotten 15 on there, take your 16th piece and I want you to cut it in half. And we're going to use this to put one piece on top and one piece on bottom. Go ahead. So here's what's crazy. It looks like a rectangle, right? Or maybe we could even call it a parallelogram, right? So now let's think about how would we find the area if this was a parallelogram. So we know that a parallelogram is base times height. You could also think of an area of a rectangle as length times width, right? So let's go with base times height. So we know that this is the base and this is the height. So area equals base times height. Here's my next question for you. What is the base in this case? Now you might be thinking, Marsha, I don't know. I don't have a ruler. Okay, hold on a second. What does this represent? Grab your other circle for a minute and take a look at when we cut this circle along each of the, those lines, what were we really cutting on? What's the name of that? I'll give you a hint. It starts with an R. A radius, that's right. So the base is really hmm, the length of the radius. So then what's the height? Well, if I look at my circle, and mine has this really nice like black rim around it, and you can't see it because it's on the wrong side, but my black rim is on the outside of these. So what would, the, what would it represent, the black circle around that? Remember, it starts with the C, the circumference, right? Okay, so this has to do with the circumference, but is it the whole circumference or half? It would be half, right? Because here is the other side of the circumference. So the circumference, remember I cut all of these out. This is what is represented here, was all of these parts around the very edge, right? That's the circumference, the distance around the outside of the circle. So this height, if I just want one of them, is actually not going to be the circumference. It's going to be one half of the circumference. So now let's plug it into our formula. So I have radius, I'm gonna put an R for the radius, right? And one half of the circumference, well, hold on, we might need to do a little math, right? Because if circumference equals pi times diameter, then what would be half of that? And I can think about it as dividing by two, right? Um, what's a diameter divided by two? And remember we said, uh, circumference is pi copies of the diameter. So if I'm cutting this in half, couldn't I say pi copies of the radius? Because there's two copies of the radius in the diameter. Another way that I can write this is like this. 
If I think of this as the circumference is 2 pi r, I'm thinking that um, two copies of the radius would be the diameter, right? So this is why I can say pi times diameter or 2 pi r, two copies of the radius times pi. If I divide this by 2, 2 divided by 2 leaves me with 1. So therefore, half of the circumference would give me pi times the radius. Okay, let's plug this in our formula. So now I know that the area equals the rate, so hold on, base times height. So the base is the radius, and the height is, remember, pi r because it's half of the circumference. So pi r. So the area equals the radius times pi times the radius. What is radius times radius? Think of what's x times x, x squared, right? So the area equals pi times the radius squared. This is how we get the area of a circle. Crazy, right? This hopefully just blew your mind. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, Marsha, I've never seen anything like this before. This sounds crazy. I always just memorized the formula. Okay, but memorizing the formula allows for error. We need to understand where the math actually comes from. Remember, keep a growth mindset when it comes to this. I want you to practice teaching someone else. Walk yourself through the activity again. Get two new circles and try it again. Really wrestle with what is the formula for the area of a parallelogram and how is that related to what we did here, right? The base was the radius. How did we get half of the circumference for the height? Struggle through that. Remember, persist in problem solving, mathematical practice number one. You can get this. This will give you a better understanding, though, of where um, the area of a circle comes from and how they derived that formula. I hope you found this video helpful and you've now got a better understanding of how to explain the area of a circle.